Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking a break from the wonderful weather outside and coming in for the congregational meeting. I want to make sure everybody signed in outside and got a copy of the agenda and the financials. Um, if you didn't sign in on your way in, please sign in on your way out. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask Pastor Tom to do our opening prayer. Okay. 
Good evening, everyone. Pastor Kyle is uh, on a little R&R right now, so uh, I'm his (laughs) fill-in. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come to you in thanksgiving for the gift you have given to us of faith in Jesus and the incredible blessings that come to us as a result of that faith, the hope that we have, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the the guidance and direction as we turn to your word. We pray that you would be with us now, Lord, because you've gathered us together as a body of believers in order to be a lighthouse throughout Sheboygan County and far beyond, of bringing this message of Jesus and his love to everybody we can. Be with us in our discussions and our deliberations and our decisions tonight so that in all things we have this goal before us that um, you have, uh, you've created and sustained and inspired this ministry so that we can be your lights in Jesus, to, of Jesus in this community. Guide us and direct us now, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Next on the agenda is the secretary's report We're looking at the minutes from our last meeting, which was April 27th. Uh, Those minutes are in your packet. I'm going to be looking for a motion to approve those minutes after you've had a chance to review. If no one's got it, Change. Pat, you're making a uh, motion made by Pat to approve and seconded by Ann Humpke. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Minutes approved. Motion carried. Next, I'll hand the microphone to Donna. Uh, The first part of the treasurer's report is our average receipts. In this report, we compare the current month of the, the last month of the current fiscal year with the last month of the previous fiscal year, the year to date, and the average weekly. So that we're comparing apples to apples, we generally focus on the average weekly giving. As you can see for this 11 months, it has been an average of 22,180 per week. Last year at this time, the average weekly was 23,620. So we are down um, just a bit from last year. Then moving down to the other categories of giving, mission offerings, 1808 per week versus 1784 per week last year, slight increase of 1.3%. Capital improvements, 1,508 per week versus 1,281 per week, uh, a significant growth of 17.7%. The parking lot fund, average of 590 a week versus 472 per week last year, up 25.1%. Total average weekly on, for all categories, $26,086 per week versus 27,157 per week last year, a slight decrease of 3.9%. Considering the circumstances of this last fiscal year, I think this is a very strong giving report, and I thank each and every one of you for that. Any questions on this report? Okay, next page. Here we have a recap of our operations um, going from left to right. The first column is just May activity. The second column from the left is year-to-date actual. Second column from the right, year-to-date budget. And the far right, prior year actual. Uh, Generally speaking, these have been good means of comparison. Our actual versus our budget versus last year. 
because of the circumstances of the year, these comparisons um, are not too useful due to all the COVID changes. So the first section, the top section, shows our income by categories, uh, general, other, and restricted with total income. Beneath that, you see the expenses broken down into all the different categories, total expense, and the bottom line, income less expense. At the end of 11 months, we have a surplus of $101,014.61. Again, a very wonderful result for this congregation after this very difficult year. But we also had a number of one-time unique events that have caused this surplus. We had state COVID grants that helped support the school. We had federal COVID tax credits that offset our wages. We had extended staff medical leaves and vacation draws. And generally speaking, much of the ministry spending was down because events were curtailed. So all of these added up to produce the surplus. These are events that won't take place next year. So, God willing. <laughs> uh, any questions on that? Bill, um, could you come to the mic, please? Without the help that we got from, let's say, the federal government, would we be in the hole about a hundred some thousand then? No. Um, the uh, payroll protection program actually happened in our last fiscal year. Our last, okay. So when the, that loan was forgiven, which happened in this fiscal year, um, because the events pertain to the last fiscal year, they didn't hit these results. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Okay. Uh, in the next page, we're looking at our dedicated funds. Just as a reminder, dedicated funds are separate uh, and set aside for specific purposes. They are not used to pay, pay the bills. They don't come out of general giving. These are gifts given for these particular purposes or fundraising events held for these purposes. So looking at, at the very top of this report, you can see the receipts for the 11 months by category, St. Paul, Early Childhood and Gathering Place, the expenses, and the net increase decrease. Um, there was a significant increase this year in St. Paul's, and that was uh, heavily due to that payroll protection money being forgiven. Then below that, you see a breakout of dedicated funds by category. As you can see, a significant amount of our dedicated funds pertain to building, capital improvement, parking lots, stained glass windows. Um, that makes up 757-389. Ministry development is 279-107. Everything else falls uh, into the 340, 738. So those funds equal 1,377,235. Early childhood has 10,945. Gathering place and memory matters has 214, 242 for a total of 1,62422. The last section of this report just shows memorial donations that have been received in the last 11 months and to what purposes they were directed. And they total $32,093. And are there any questions on this report? Okay, um, can you show the graph? And this graph just shows you uh, 
pictorially where the memorial, where the dedicated funds reside. Oh, and we have the update on stained glass. There's no hand up, okay. Um, showing that the windows near the library are being repaired. Um, the windows that still need replacing and the funds that are needed to cover these, we still need $10,379. Um, there's just been some questions about where we're at with the stained glass windows. Uh, it's really been a great um, area that I've seen a lot of memorials come in for. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give everybody an update of where we're at as far as moving it along. We did have the company come in and inspect all of the stained glass windows in the building, even like these little guys up. Um, there's little windows all over the place. Um, they checked all of them. So the only ones that still need to be repaired is this one and the one opposite it um, that, that are getting bad. So um, those are each $6,500. Um, there is still some money in the account. So we have $10,379 to go and that should take care of all of the windows that need to be replaced. Um, the rest, they said, should last at least another 10 years before we would really need to do anything with them. So, uh, so we're doing really good getting those replaced. Any questions on that? So I now would look for a motion for approval on the treasurer's report. Bill? And a second by Paul Tempest, senior. And all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So, treasurer's report approved. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, then we come to the budget for this next year. So um, basically what we do with the budget is the staff get together, we review all of our expenses, we put together our plan. Uh, the personnel team does all of our staffing budgets. Um, they look at merit increases. All of our staff are given a performance review, which gives us a score, um, and that determines what everybody's um, uh, merit increases for the year, which would be effective um, coming in July, assuming the budget gets approved. So we put all those pieces together. It goes to the council. We pass it back and forth a little bit, and um, that what, that's what brings us to tonight, to the congregation, to um, see what the budget has in store for us. So if you look at the first page, it is colored. Um, I know you can't see it on the screen, but you should be able to see it hopefully in the handout. So just to get perspective of how this looks, um, the top half is our income, and then the middle section are our operating expenses. The orange column is last year, so that would be July of 2019 up until June of 2020. Then ye the yellow column is this current year, um, we are 11 months through the year, so I projected what I think June will, what will happen in June. So right now, if you look at the very bottom line, I'm estimating we'll have a surplus of $91,896. At the close of last year, we had $31,841. Um, a lot of that surplus, Donna mentioned before, is really due to unusual circumstances because of our unusual year. Um, then the blue column is what we are looking to budget for this next upcoming year. And I will go into a little more detail as we go into the next couple of pages. Um, but basically when we budget a nonprofit, um, our income needs to equal our expenses. So what we do is I budget all of the income lines other than the very top, the regular envelopes. So we budget all the income lines, we budget all the expense, 
and what is left needs to be covered by regular envelopes, which is what people contribute to current expenses when they mark it on their envelope. So that gives us $1.2 million um, that needs to come in through our regular envelopes to cover all of our expenses. That is a 7.6% increase over what was actually given this year. So, and the year prior was a 1.2 was actually given. Um, so if you look at the green column, we did this a little differently this year because when the council met, we looked at these numbers and this year was such an unusual year that to compare our budget to, last, to our current year, the numbers are really skewed because just so many things didn't happen. Um, our income was different. Everything was very different. So we created the green column, which actually compares our budget to last year, which was essentially a normal year up until about March. <laughs> um, so when you do that, you can see that there is very little change in our budget um, when you compare those two lines. So our actual dollar change in regular envelopes is only $11,000. And if you come down to the bottom, um, we're looking at about a 2.5% increase in expenses, which is really quite marginal um, for a budget to move. So I wanted to just kind of explain that. Does that make sense to everybody? It's not normally how we look at it, but it really gives a better picture um, the council felt this year comparing it to the year before. Um, so then, if you take a look at the next page, you will see some pie charts. So we have $1,375,000 1, $1, in expenses. What does that all go to, you might be asking? So this pie chart tells you the majority is staffing. And staffing includes all of the benefits as well. We have 30, about 35 people on staff um, here in various various ways, so that certainly contributes to most of it. We're in the people business, um, and, and you can see that here. The next um, area is our school, um, also several staff down there, and then um, our building and grounds, then support and administrative expenses, which includes um, office supplies, things, um, paper, all of those sorts of things, um, licensures, technology, technology is a big chunk, um, that sort of thing. And then our ministry expenses are really like um, devotionals and Bible studies and the materials that the pastors need to prep their sermons and that sort of thing falls into ministry expenses. So that's kind of a snapshot of, of where things are going. Um, so the last chart there is what makes up the $43,000 increase. And now, the, again, this is comparing to last year, not our current year, um, again, because of the, the goofiness. So um, as you'll see, the first column is actually we had a, a negative or a decrease in our staffing. Um, so we have saved um, 100, well, that's kind of a goofy a percentage, but... Um, we saved a chunk of money in staffing. We had pastoral changes. We changed an office staff from a full-time to a part-time position. Um, there were some changes in benefits. So that actually um, is going to result in saving money this upcoming year. Then we've had an increase in the support that went to the school. We also had an increase in the merit and wage adjustments for the year. Health insurance benefits. Um, those go up every January. It's set by Concordia. Um, and then other small adjustments made up the rest of that. So overall, um, a bit of an increase for the year. Any questions on that? Um, the last graph is not really necessarily part of the budget, but it is our capital improvement fund plan, which we try to bring in front of the congregation every once in a while. Um, 
these are all projects that have to be approved in advance. They aren't approved during the, the budgeting process, but it's just a chance for us to get a, on the radar the things that are coming up, the things that are going to have to be done within the building um, over the next five years. They're kind of rough dollar amounts, um, but just for us to get a, a vision of what's going to be coming up. So actually the first one on the line, Convert Fellowship Hall to all LED lighting. The council actually approved that last week, so that's going to be happening. Um, a great project that's really, it's going to help us with light, changing light bulbs in the Fellowship Hall is not easy. Um, and this, this will hopefully help with some of that. LED bulbs will last longer, we don't have to bring in a lift as often and they're more energy efficient. So, um, and then you can just see other things this next year that we think we're probably gonna be looking at, a new vacuum sweeper. The current vacuum that we have for the Fellowship Hall is really, really old. Our custodian can barely push it. Um, it's huge. So um, there are more efficient Just, Just to give you an idea how old that is, they bought that right after I came, or right about the time I came. So it's I, over 23 years old. That makes sense because I saw the manual and the late the outfit the lady was wearing on the manual. I'm like, this is really old. Yeah, yeah. So it's how many of you have got a 23 year old vacuum cleaner? <laughs> it's time. It's time. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> um, we are still thinking that they, we've our HVAC guys have told us that the air conditioner unit for this the worship center is going to die eventually. We decided we won't repair it until that happened, and we've gone on, I think, two or three years, actually, so it was a good choice. We're kind of milking that out, but we keep it on the radar because we know it's gonna happen. Um, we're looking at replacing our phone system this upcoming year. Um, our phone system is tied to our paging system, and if you're here when we do paging, it's, it's not good. We can't control volumes anymore, we can't control zones, we can't get parts. Um, when we got a new office, I couldn't get a new phone. Um, it's just an outdated system and we can't get pieces for it anymore. So that's um, coming up. We are looking at um, the regular windows in the building, not the stained glass, but all the rest. Um, especially some of the offices are starting to rot. The sills are getting really bad. Um, our maintenance guys have tried to replace some of them, but they are, they are really starting to deteriorate. So that is um, on the radar. And um, our room dividers that we use throughout the building um, to close off rooms, those are starting to get bad as well. Um, we didn't use them a lot this year because we were spread out, um, so we were able to push that off and we'll reassess again before we would do anything um, there. So, just an idea of what's kind of coming for everybody to have on their radar. But again, none of that is very spe specifically gets voted on um, here as part of the budget. So, any questions on the budget? If there aren't any questions, then I'm going to look for a motion to approve the budget and then a second. So, is there a motion on the floor? Bill? It's made the motion to approve. Anne's making the motion to second. She's seconding the motion. So, no further questions. I'll ask us to vote. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. New budget is approved. So, well, thank you and the staff and Donna for all the work that you've been doing on that. Um, congregation concerns. Does anyone have general concerns or questions they'd like to have raised? Okay, everybody wants to go outside. All right. Oh, Paul, did you have a? Should we be concerned about the whole thing? 
Should we be concerned about the low attendance? At congregation tonight or on Sunday? Both. Both. Would you like to answer that? Uh, Mark, would you like to answer that? Well, I can answer about... So I guess I can answer a little bit about Sunday, Thursday and Sunday, actually. So, you know, we certainly have seen a drop-off since COVID in our regular attenders. That's, that's a fact. It's about half of where it once was before COVID. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that, that we're, we're assuming that some people are enjoying the online service. Some people may have just gotten out of the habit of coming to church. So what the elder team have been talking about is that after we kind of get through this summer period, because summer always is a quieter period when people are taking vacations and, and whatnot. But what we're going to do after the summer period is to actually get a list. And, and uh, Stephanie can pull the list for us. The people who were regular attenders prior to COVID and who haven't been through our, through our doors since then. And we're just going to make a call. We're just going to give them a call and encourage them back and talk to them and see where they are on attending attending church on, on Sundays or on Thursdays. So that's really the action we're going to be taking in the fall. We did a, a, a one last fall, kind of a similar list. And, you know, the, the, pre, the, big, the big issue then was about, like, we're just not comfortable either coming to service because of COVID or because of wearing masks. So now that we're through that, and hopefully we'll stay through that, again, we are going to pull them again and, and just reach out to our congregation. So... That's our plan of action for the fall. I'm just wondering, uh, from a congregation meeting standpoint, you know, we do it on the evening. If we did a, did we ever do congregation meetings after church after 10:45, and was con and was attendance better at that point? I don't remember. I must not have been attending. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but I don't remember coming after church. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's always a challenge. And uh, if you have issues on the agenda that are important to the hearts and minds of people, they show up to talk about them and to participate. Um, there's nothing terribly sexy about budgets. <laughs> this tends to be one of the lower attended meetings uh, of the year. It just is. Um, and it's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. And perhaps part of it has to do with when it, when it falls. Uh, school's out now. Um, you know, ball games, people are at ball games and all kinds of different things. Um, lots of things drawn their attention now. Bucks are playing tonight, which is why a bunch of guys are saying, uh, it's good that there aren't many people here to talk. <laughs> Any yeah. other questions or concerns? Uh, I'll just make one comment in regard to, appreciate Mark's uh, report from the elder standpoint. And uh, just this past week, uh, uh, this, this past weekend, I had, I don't know, one to two handfuls of people uh, that just commented to me that uh, it was their first time back to worship. So we're, we're still in that phase of, of people um, getting more and more comfortable with uh, coming back. Um, uh, has yeah, it has. It is. It's making progress going up. But, but people, uh, I had a bunch of people this last weekend make it a point to make that comment to me that, uh, and, and you know, a couple of them said, oh, it feels so good to be back, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so uh, we're, we're still in that mode. We're still in that returning mode and, and we, we'll be, I, I think, for a while. Okay. Could, could I add something since I have the yeah. mic already? Sure. Um, now that we're kind of moving beyond this COVID season in some ways, but we're still maintaining a lot of our live streams. That's a way to remind people if they can't get here physically, they can still listen. Um, maybe there's an avenue that we can maybe monitor the chat a little bit more if someone really does have a question or 
you know, they could post questions ahead of time if they have a congregation concern. So um, as we've kind of maintained, I don't think the live streaming is going anywhere, but um, I feel it's important to be here. But also if, you know, someone really can't make it, um, can pull it up on YouTube, you can listen with earbuds or something and just kind of, you know, be, be it here in terms of audio. So that's my thought. I also think we should give a, a good prayer of thanks to God that we've had such trustworthy leadership over the last years, including Pastor Tom, of course, uh, number one. But I think all the leaders, the council, the elders, and so forth, people just, I think, feel confident that we're being well-led. So why come out here and uh, sit when they don't need to? But I think it also gives us a responsibility, of course, to continue praying that that leadership continues and we have every reason to think it will. And uh, that trust hopefully will be always rewarded by contributions and by attendance on Sunday and growth in our church. God bless. Thank you. Okay, somebody probably can help me. Last time we had a meeting, I believe Pastor Kyle said that for looking, I don't know, Mark, if you agree with Pastor, somebody can help me out. I believe he said in four years, if you come to church once and take communion, you're a member. No. I kind of disagree with that. And the last meeting I heard a lot of, what? Do you agree with uh, that statement? So, so basically, we're trying to put a line in the sand, right? And saying, if you're a member of this church, if you've come through these doors once over the last four years, we're going to still consider you a member of our church. If you have not, and Pastor Kyle and hopefully Pastor Rob, too, will be reaching out to ask why not. Because we just don't want to throw people out in terms of a, you know, from a membership perspective. But that's the, the line in the sand we're, we're drawing at this point, four years. And yes, I do agree with that. I, I disagree. I know the last meeting was a lot of moans. I mean, I can probably see you come to church once in a year, you're still a member. Once in four years? Yeah, you, you just don't know what people are going through, right? And, and when you've talked to people, and, and I've been on those phone calls, and I know Pastor Kyle's been on those phone calls too, you know, whether it's shut in or if they're on military service or. They may be children who are members of this church who just haven't found a home church and haven't been back for a while. There are reasons, and we'd rather err on the side of caution in that perspective than just unexpectedly or inadvertently throwing somebody out. Okay. We have, what, about 2,600 members? That's about right. Okay. How much do you owe the synod every year for one member? And that's a good question, and it's part of the reason why we want to weed out some of the really people who are, don't consider themselves, consider themselves members here anymore. And yes, we do have to pay occasionally, especially on like big events. I forget the big event that's coming up in 2022. Yeah, we don't do that annually. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, we, don't, we don't pay dues to synod based on membership. Uh, what we do get assessed is when there's a convention. That's and right. two out of three years, there's a convention. Uh, there's either a district convention or a synodical convention, and then there's an off year. It's a three-year cycle. This year, uh, because of the COVID thing and everything, uh, the decision in synod uh, was, and, and congregations voted on this, uh, the decision was to delay uh, to, to stretch that three-year cycle out to a four-year cycle. Um, and so, I'm trying to think, I believe we're we were scheduled to have a district convention this year and a synodical convention next year. There's not going to be a convention this year. Next year will be the district one and the synodical one after that, and it'll get back into the three-year sw uh, swing of things. But that's what we get assessed based upon communicant membership. And uh, it's, different, it's a different amount for a district convention 
than it is for the synodical convention. It's a little bit more for the synodical convention. But that's when we get assessed. But we don't get assessed like, I don't know, just a, for a general assessment from synod. Right. And I, and I think there's a misconception among people. I think people think that we have to pay some kind of annual due to, to synod to be a part of synod, and that's not true. I don't know the yeah, I, We'd have to look at it for it. But to your point, it's a good time now to look you, at our you membership mem numbers, particularly as these district and these, these uh, conventions will be coming up, because the assessment will come okay. in 2022. Stephanie just said uh, the district co convention uh, assessment, she thinks, is a little over $2, right? And synodical one for the synodical convention is... Uh, she, she thought it was closer to five. That sounds high to me. I, it seems like it was more like three and a half to four, but, but it's, it's more. We don't have exact numbers. Yeah. It does change every year, uh, every, every cycle a little bit. So. Well, it also seemed to me that Pastor Kyle's, um, that your four-year time frame, there's a lot of work to do the first year, okay? In fact, there's a lot of work to do for the first couple years of making those calls. So I think the fact that the guys have started on a four-year program doesn't mean that the four-year program is never going to change, but from a starting point, the four-year program seemed to be one that they could get their hands around and actually say they're going to do four years and, and, and get it done. If you say you're going to call everybody who didn't come to church last year, Pastor Kyle's not going to be able to preach. He'll be too busy on the phone. Well, there are different approaches out there. Yeah, that's one approach. Yeah, it. What's that? We 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 did we've sent things out periodically. Yeah. I just had another comment to add to that. I was previously excommunicated from a church. Um, I was away at college. I was not living in the city that my church was. And by kicking me out of the church, my entire family and extended family also decided to leave the church at that point in time. It was really off-putting to us all. It was very hurtful. I wouldn't want us to put ourselves and our congregation in that place either. I just wanted to share that personal thing. It was a really, really tough thing to go through for me and my family. You go back to the church and tell them what you just told us? We did. <laughs> yep. Yes, they did. Did not do anything to try and keep the rest of my family either. And there are other individuals from, I see Jeff back there. He had a poor experience at that church too. So <laughs> um, it, there was just a lot of hard feelings there. And I really would not wish that upon our congregation. Yeah, the the goal, keep in mind, the goal isn't kicking people out. <laughs> the goal is restoration. That's always the goal. And, and so you have to approach this delicately. It re really is important. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I'm going to hand it over to... Uh, we just wanted to take a moment to thank our outgoing council members as they reach the end of their term. So Margaret, Jane, and Brad. Uh, I know since I've been here, um, it's amazing the dedication that, uh, that you show, uh, willingness to share your opinions, uh, your knowledge. Um, and it, it's just been a, a blessing to us, I think, and the congregation having the three of you here. Um, we wish you the best. We know you're not going anywhere. Uh, you may be off a of council, but you're still here. 
uh, and just wanted to say thank you. So if we could have a quick round of applause. I don't know. Doesn't she have to keep coming for a year? Isn't that how it works? <laughs> I will say I feel very um, uh, confident and excited about the new leadership that's coming in for council. And I see lots and lots of good things that are coming for the future of St. Paul's. And no, I'm not really going very far away. I might not be at every, oh, maybe I will be at every congregational meeting now, Paul. <laughs> save, save me a seat. So, no, it's been my honor and my pleasure to serve, as I know it has been for the other members as well. And speaking of pe things, people that we're saying thank you to and uh, goodbye to, Pastor Tom, you know, I've joked a number of times since we closed asking you to say the prayer because we wanted you to keep working. Well, you're going to be working till Sunday at 10.45. <laughs> but uh, let's give him a huge round of applause and our thanks. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It has been my great honor and privilege to be a pastor here. Um, there's no better place to serve, let me tell you. And uh, it's been an honor and a privilege. And, you know, we've got, man, we just have wonderful people here uh, who have a real heart for God and a real heart for uh, seeing this ministry flourish and reach people. And that, that really is the key. I, I'm going to, I don't mean to beat a, and I'm not going to call it a dead horse, but, but uh, that beat that drum again. But this whole business of um, people coming back or not coming back, again, I just I can't stress that enough, that the goal isn't booting people out. You know, it's not clearing the membership roles or anything like that, because I, I sometimes hear that kind of talk coming out of people, and that's, that's not the goal at all. Our mission here is connecting people to Christ, Right? <laughs> not disconnecting them. That, that's, that's what we're all about. And uh, that's, that's always the goal, is how can, how can we uh, restore uh, that relationship with the church? Uh, and so uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's a good plan to start with that they have. And I'm, I'm looking forward to um, seeing people responding to that. And that, that's a real joy when you see people starting to respond to those kinds of things. All right, let's, let's stand and wrap up in prayer, shall we? Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you again for this privilege <clears throat> you give to us of serving you uh, as members of the church. We pray that you would be with this congregation, Lord. You've, this ministry has existed for a long, long time. You, you've been inspiring people and, and guiding and leading people and drawing people into a a relationship with you through faith in Jesus and helping that relationship to grow for so many years. We look forward to seeing what you're going to do here in the years to come as you continue to draw people uh, into this saving relationship, drawing them to the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus. Uh, be with our outgoing leaders from our church council, we, we do. We thank them so much for their service. And be with our new leaders that are coming in now. Um, continue to guide and direct this ministry to the glory of your name and the blessing of many, many people. We pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.